Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. This past month has been incredibly busy here with college commencement and high school graduation season taking up most of our days and we've been squeezing in other uh, outdoor summertime jobs on the days in between. It's always great to have a busy start to the summer. Uh, it sets the pace for the rest of the year. I'm not going to do another detailed uh, system overview of the commencement system this year because it's very similar to the system I just did the detailed walkthrough of for winter commencement season. Obviously, we changed some stuff. Uh, the room's actually oriented a different way from uh, the, the video you saw in the past. We're now facing a different direction in the same arena. So obviously, speaker systems and things of that nature were, uh, were changed to meet the new requirements. But essentially, we kept it a very similar show, JBL Vertec pretty much all the way around. We were using the 4883, 4886, 4887, and 4888 boxes to uh, fill out the arena. We also used a number of other boxes, things like MSI's Hex Wedge and other things like VRX and other smaller boxes to fill in various roles uh, throughout the event. In between commencement ceremonies, I had the pleasure of working on a comedy show in DC. So while I was setting up for that show, I ran into a really unusual problem with a little uh, JBL Eon 10, the older version. It looks like while somebody was trying to unplug the power cable, the entire assembly, the entire connector came out of the, the speaker along with the cable, disconnecting the internal wiring, which terminates into spade connectors from the actual uh, uh, power input itself. And Unfortunately, those wires that are left inside are too short to be able to reattach those spade connectors without disassembling the entire box. And even worse, uh, the spade connectors on the actual input uh, itself are then exposed. So if, if this had been still plugged into the wall when this happened, uh, you've got live spade connectors uh, on the inside of that block uh, exposed now. So that's not a great failure mode for a consumer type product like this, but these are quite a few years old and have been through a fair amount of use. Uh, and this is definitely the first time I've ever seen this happen. In other news, after a fun Instagram post about the ClearCom uh, Tempest 900 system uh, we were using for graduations, a rep from ClearCom reached out and offered to try to set up a demo for me uh, so I can share with you the new FreeSpeak 2 system or the newer FreeSpeak 2 system. Uh, that they have out and I'm working with them right now to try to set that up with the local rep either a uh, in-person demo or a loaner or something of that uh, nature. I've been around the FreeSpeak system but haven't had a chance to use it in any critical manner or really dig into it. The features on any of ClearCom systems are so deep that I'd really like to have a chance to uh, at least have one uh, for a couple days where I can really dig into it uh, on my own time. But uh, I'm working on setting that up and I'll bring you whatever I can as far as a, an in-depth look at that system. In the projects category, the QBox Alternative Project is uh, now coming back on the front burner for me. I have just been so busy uh, with actual jobs that trying to coordinate uh, moving to the next step on the QBox project has been kind of backburnered for the last few weeks. I originally set out to make this project in a way that anybody that was interested in following along and making one themselves could. Uh, but since posting the video, uh, it's kind of taken on its own little life, and that's great. You know, a community build project is what I wanted, so um, I'm hoping we can get together and actually move forward on some of these ideas. I think that's the hardest part of a project like this is actually taking it from discussion uh, to actually making something happen. And right now I'm really hoping we can get all of the discussion into one place on the forum on the website. I, I don't think it'll make any sense to move forward with separate discussions as they are happening uh, on Facebook, on Reddit, on YouTube, in the comments. Um, and everybody's, you know, each one of those groups, there's different opinions and different uh, suggestions coming out of them and trying to move forward with one project with a bunch of different uh, conversations broken up. It's too time consuming for me to try to bring all that together and then reshare it all with the other groups. So hopefully the folks that um, want to help will continue. A few folks already have to join the forum and make the discussion happen over there. So we're all in one place. 
Um, I've been continuing my research into what I want out of the box, and a ton of people have suggested a cable tester, and there's been all sorts of suggestions of microcontrollers to do different sort of cable testing and things like that. I don't generally carry a cable tester as a rule uh, normally, because if a cable's bad, I just replace it and move on. But in an attempt to find out if that would be useful as a feature for me personally, I picked up uh, a rat sniffer sender unit, um, that I've been carrying the last few weeks. Uh, it, it's a nice unit because I can just fit it in my pocket and I kind of forget that it's there. Um, but just to see how much I would use something like this if I have it on me, uh, is it worth it for me to include it? If you use a cable tester every single day, that's awesome. I'm not saying that's not a thing to do. I just typically don't. So uh, I'm trying to figure out for me what features I want. That's the whole point of this project was to make it in such a way that for me it has the features I want and then you can modify it and make it the way you want it. It's so easy for these discussions to devolve into uh, arguments about features and oh man I really want a cable tester and then the next person no I don't want a cable tester. Who cares? The whole point of this project was to make it your way. So instead of arguing over the benefits and the merits of different features as though this is going to be some mass produced product, that's the other thing I've gotten a ton of is, you know, backlash over what to do differently for mass production. I'm not mass producing anything. Uh, if you watch the video again, the first video, uh, my ultimate goal would be to maybe put together a kit of parts so folks that want to build one could just buy the parts all in one place. Um, I am not trying to make a new product to compete with the Q-Box. That's not the goal here. Uh, if we go down that road, we're going to quickly find ourselves into the price range of the Q-Box and the other offerings like it uh, to mass produce a product like this. If somebody else wants to do that and you think you can do it cheaper and better, knock yourselves out. Like this is not a, uh, I'm not trying to make money off this. This is just a cool project. So just keep that in mind, please. Uh, and temper the discussion, if you can, towards actually building something as opposed to us just going back and forth on ideal what-ifs and how we could possibly ease and all this other stuff. Um, I'm not trying to start a, another company to compete with Whirlwind, please. On another front, I'm very much late to the party, but uh, looking at getting a simple 3D printer. Uh, with Monoprice, they're selling a unit now for around $200. It's finally cheap enough, and I've watched a bunch of reviews. It seems like it's good enough quality to mess around prototyping some bits and pieces that I've wanted over the years. One of the best pieces of gear I've ever used is the discontinued double pop filter uh, that used to come with the Crown LM300 series of lectern mics. It's an awesome little two-stage pop filter that has a normal foam windscreen for the microphone and then a standoff little plastic ring uh, and then another piece of foam on top of that. With it. So you've got a foam, an air gap, and then your normal windscreen. And it really cuts down on like the most aggressive plosives uh, when you're doing lectern microphones. But unfortunately, that microphone and that filter were discontinued a few years ago. So in an attempt to re-engineer one, uh, I went on eBay looking to looking to find one so I could make some measurements. I found the original schematics online and I've started to translate those into Illustrator so I can make a 3D print, but I figured I'd try to buy one, see if I could find an original one uh, to compare it to. And I ended up scoring uh, this Crown LM301A, I think it is, yep, 301A, on eBay for $10 for the whole freaking kit, which is pretty, pretty neat it's like brand new in the box and it came with unfortunately the foam has all spoiled but it came with the little plastic ring uh, i'll show it in some better detail here maybe against my shirt um, but this is the piece that i think it would be perfect for 3d printing it's a ring with some standoffs and another ring on top of it uh, a foam piece goes here and then the foam cone that the microphone goes into there and we're going to try to remake these so they fit a number of different microphones not just the old crown i'm going to try to make this foam so it fits uh, other microphones of this style which will be really really neat so my plan is to learn illustrator better by modeling that uh that part and trying to get it to print similar to the original 
and hopefully that'll be a nice easy learning curve for me with Illustrator and 3D printing. Uh, if you have uh, the ability to do this and the skills, I'll put the original drawing with the measurements on the website. And if you feel like printing some of these up, you've already got the technology and the skills, I I'd love to see it. I'm not at all you know, hung up on doing it all myself. These are really handy little tools to have, and unfortunately they're discontinued. So if anybody else is interested in helping out, uh, I'm going to try order some foam today and figure out the best way to cut and make that fit other microphones, and we'll go from there. Uh, the Soundcraft UI-12... Uh, mixer is still pending a return. That's totally on me, not on Soundcraft. I've been super, super busy and getting that returned and getting a new one back, absolutely on me. And I'll do an update on that once I get to the next step. So right now that's uh, kind of on hold and I'll get back to that as soon as I have anything more to report. So that's it for this week. The next couple of weeks are super busy again, traveling again, and I've got a bunch of other stuff coming up in town. So hopefully we'll keep on with some of these projects. We'll get some of this stuff done. Uh, if anybody's interested in helping with any of the projects, again, please jump over to the website, go to the forum. Uh, I'm not trying to make that forum like a competitor to real sound forums. I've got those linked on the website as well. If you want to go to an actual sound forum, uh, please do that through the links. Uh, soundforums.net or pro sound web i'm simply just looking for a place that we can have a conversation about these topics uh, that's cohesive as opposed to broken up over multiple platforms where i share the videos thanks for watching hopefully i'll see you over on the website on the forum and if you do like these videos and you want to help me make more of them please jump down to the uh, affiliate links in the description below there's also a link to patreon or just jump over to the website and you'll find all the same links over there where you can support the channel and help me make more of these videos